We now move to Book 4, Chapter 1, which is on mercantile systems, or mercantilism. The chapter is called Of the Principle of the Commercial, or Mercantile System. Note that there's also a very short introduction before this chapter. Smith lays out the overall organization of Book 4, and he notes that Book 4 will cover two different systems, the mercantile system and the agricultural system. Now, what you're going to see is that you get 270 pages or so, in my edition, on the mercantile system, and Book 4, Chapter 9, then suddenly, is a much shorter chapter on the agricultural system. So keep track of this overall organization. There'll be chapter after chapter on the mercantile system, but this is still part of a broader book pairing the mercantile system up against the agricultural system. Smith really does make his head-on critique of mercantilism here, and he stresses that wealth does not consist of gold and silver. He discusses what we now call a fallacy of composition, that for a single individual, gold and silver do signify wealth, but for the nation as a whole, gold and silver are simply one part of wealth, wealth in the broader sense referring to the ability of that nation to produce valuable goods and services. Smith then turns to discuss whether we should prohibit the exportation of the precious metals, gold and silver. He considers two points. First, if, say, gold is exported from a country, those metals do not sink to the bottom of the ocean, never to be recovered, but in fact it's quite often the case that gold and silver may flow back into a country in return, of course, for goods. Second, Smith considers the point that gold and silver can be smuggled anyway, so perhaps the attempt to prohibit their exportation is doomed to failure. Now, Smith basically agrees with these two arguments, but he actually thinks they don't go nearly far enough in refuting mercantilist fallacies. Smith's main critique of mercantilism in this context is really a broader point about markets and market prices, and it's well expressed by this quotation, and I quote, we trust with perfect security that the freedom of trade, without any attention of government, will always supply us with the wine which we have occasion for, and we trust with equal security that it will always supply us with all the gold and silver which we can afford to purchase or to employ. In other words, if you allow the price system to operate, Smith believes that the proper supply of the precious metals will be part of a self-regulating order governed by market prices. Smith stresses once again that the main benefit of trade comes from the exchange of goods, getting what you want more and giving up what you want less. That's quite distinct from the question of how much gold or silver is flowing into your country. Finally, this chapter closes with a brief taxonomy of different kinds of import restrictions and export subsidies. Smith is going to turn his attention to these in more detail quite shortly.